website, and I encourage you to download that and participate as fully as you are able. Continuing now with the confession. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. God of all mercy. Opposing your will in our lives, we have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able to, from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? The peace and the word of God surpasses all understanding. Please be seated. Good morning, All Saints Brookline. I'm the Reverend Liz Steinhauser from your sister church, St. Stephen's in the south end of Boston. I'm very excited to be here with you in person and also with our friends online. Amen? As most of you know, among the ministries we run out of St. Stephen's are the Be Safe and Be Ready programs summer and after-school programs for youth and teens. All Saints Brookline has been a steady partner in this work for close to 15 years, making nearly 100 meals for middle schoolers and teens during your Be Safe Partnership Week, planning and carrying out fabulous field trips like the one to Houghton's Pond, and collecting overflowing bags of groceries to help families facing food insecurity. Before the pandemic, we began an effort to build even more connections with an Advent gathering of young people from both of our churches almost exactly two years ago, sharing hot chocolate and hot glue gunning of snow globes. Anyone participate in any of those things? For all of these ministries, for this shared mission of caring about and loving young people, thank you. I'm especially pleased to be with you to reflect on this morning's simple and straightforward readings. Am I right? <laughs> thank you very much, Reverend Richard, for your invitation. <laughs> From Paul's letter to the Jesus community in Philippi, we hear, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. From the writer of the Gospel of Luke, quoting John the Baptizer, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Our scriptures today, I think, reflect our faith and reflect our world. Clear and contradictory. Alone, each statement is familiar, memorable, coherent, right? But together, these verses are confounding, seemingly incompatible. The peace of God surpasses all understanding, really is the one that is the most true. Who can comprehend God? Am I right? Yeah? The more I reflected and prayed on our texts for today, the more they seemed exactly perfect for our time. We have a readily accessible, effective vaccine and yet COVID cases today are rising at nearly exactly the same rate they were a year ago today. 
Research shows that easy access to firearms results in more shootings. And yet we cannot pass the most basic, sensible restrictions on guns. We know what makes public education work. Caring teachers that we pay well, adequate resources for schools and facilities, integrated classrooms with young people of all races in the same room. And yet we fail to invest in all of our school districts equitably. Loneliness and isolation are at all-time highs. Teenagers have all kinds of suicidal ideation, and yet Episcopal Church attendance has dropped 30 percent in the last decade, matching trends in most mainline Protestant churches. If you are like me, when you hear these statements, when you listen to the news, you just shake your head. I saw Tammy do it with my first line. Mm, mm, mm. It does not make any sense, amen? <laughs> unless we become both and Christians, unless we are people of faith who can hold both suffering and salvation at the same time, unless we are people who follow a savior who is both a baby and crucified, unless we are Advent people who are both patiently waiting for baby Jesus to be born and actively preparing the way of the Lord. Waiting and preparing. Now, John the Baptizer is a great hero for us because he is a both-and person of faith. All sorts of people travel from the city of Jerusalem to the wilderness to learn and be baptized by this Jewish prophet in the desert. The crowds asked him, what then should we do? The tax collectors asked him, teacher, what should we do? Soldiers asked him, and we, what should we do? Isn't that us? Aren't we constantly saying, what should we do in the midst of all that news I just recited? And in each case, John the baptizer says, share what you have. Reject greed. Don't remake the rules for your own benefit. Honestly, it does in fact sound a little bit like Paul. Be gentle. Be nice to other people. Don't worry, there's enough for everyone. Both of them say it is not our position. It's not our role in society. It's not who our ancestors are or our relatives are or what our zip code is. God is near to all of us. And if we believe the Gospels, and I do, God is most near those who are suffering the most. The poor, the marginalized, the young people, the lepers, those who are isolated because of their position or illness. And honestly, this is good news if we're able to hear it. Amen? Because if we're truly able to believe this message, this both and news of suffering and salvation, of vipers and gentleness, it's really what our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, calls the way of love. Because the way of love does not say love only those who are easy to love, our favorite cousin, our least smart-alecky teenager. <laughs> it is not a path that says only love when it's convenient to do so, when you have like everything all ready and your shopping is done and the wreath is hung. The way of love sounds gentle, but honestly, and I know you know this is true, it's hard, and it's rocky, and it's winding, and it's tiring. And again, I ask you, amen? God, our faith, Paul, John the baptizer, they all say we are called to love even when it's challenging, and perhaps especially when it's challenging. Even when there's a virus, even when there's fewer of us, even when the consumerist message of the world seems to contradict the idea that Jesus is the reason for this season. 
Amen? Amen. But here's some more good news. I think we can do this. I think we must do this way of love work. And the really good news is that I think we're already doing it. We're not waiting for something else to happen, for someone else to do it. We, St. Stephen's Youth Programs, All Saints Brookline, we are already preparing the way of the Lord. I think there's other ways to do it too, but let me just talk about our partnership. Because I think that the Lord is calling us to do what we're doing and perhaps even a little bit more. Because true partnership is not only charitable giving, even though we do need this right now. We do need to share our coats. The families of St. Stephen's youth programs are still facing a 30% under an unemployment rate. Folks that I work with are still facing food insecurity and still need groceries. I think you all can share. I think you all can help us with that. I know you can. But I think if we are ever to get to the kingdom of God, we need to face not only charitable acts, but all the ways that our country, our church, our supposedly democratic policies are designed mostly along racial lines to give some people more over and over again, more than is prescribed for them, more than we are entitled to. I think God and the gospel calls us to create new and improved truly inclusive of all understandings of what it means to be satisfied with our wages and our wealth. We are called by God and today's gospel to share the common good, public health, public education, decent housing, with everyone in the common, all of our neighbors. Amen? So, I think the question for us is both and people who want to follow the Jesus way is what does this look like during Advent in Boston and Brookline in 2021 in the middle of the middle of a pandemic? How can we prepare the way of the Lord right now? I think we already know. I invite you to participate. Eileen Sweeney and others are going to be working with folks to gather groceries. We're going back to the Be Love program of distributing groceries because we can see that that need still exists to meet people's needs right now. We're looking to have groceries twice a week, twice a month, sorry, from January to June. That's loving kindness. That's an act of mercy. I think we're also invited to have new understanding as of that common good and what the kingdom of God can look like. I know you all are about to launch into some courageous conversations, am I right? Talking about racial equity, digging into the history of your own congregation and how it relates to our diocese and our democratic history. I think we're going to be upset at some of that. I think we're going to be uncomfortable with some of that. I think the road might be rocky and windy at points, but I know we can do it. I also invite you to join St. Stephen's Youth Programs as we do acts of justice, as we create more justice in the Commonwealth. Right now, we're working on a number of different campaigns around public education, including an elected school committee, which seems like it's a Boston issue, but in fact needs all of our state representatives to vote in favor of it. So please, I invite you to participate in that. We're also doing a campaign to make sure that all the young people in the Boston School District can take the benefits of compensatory services, the federal money that's coming to the school district to help young people overcome some of the gaps and learning losses that this past two years and now three years of interrupted learning has developed. Will you join us in that? Will you join us too in the next activities of the Be Peace for George campaign as we think about what's next in our efforts across our diocese to reduce gun violence. Just raise your hand if you're interested in doing any of these activities that I've just described. Or even perhaps putting some money in the collection plate to support other people in taking those action steps. Thank you. It's not only about wages and wealth. 
It is also about prayer and love. Together, I feel like we can and are preparing the way of the Lord, and for that I am grateful. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness, let your love be known to everyone. This is good news for us. This is good news for all the people. Amen. God, you put your trust in us so we can proclaim your word. Show us how to have trust in each other so our world is complete. Be with us and help us to pray, saying, We wait for you, God. We wait for you, O God. Come and save your people. We sing praises to you, O God, as we enter this time of contemplation. Guide all leaders of this church and the world to show compassion and lead with strong faith. We wait for you, O God. We sing praises to you, O God, as we beseech you to endow with wisdom all who hold authority in the world, so they govern with justice and inclusion for all. We wait for you, O God. We sing praises to you, O God, as we are entrusted with the stewardship of all creatures who move on this earth. Give us the strength to care for the earth which sustains all life. We wait for you, O God. We sing praises to you, O God, as we pray for all who are hurting in body, mind, and spirit. Show them that in trusting you, they will be healed. We wait for you, O God. We sing praises to you, O God, as we ask that you take all who have died to their final resting place. For all who are grieving, guard their hearts and enfold them in your love. We wait for you, O God. Please add other prayers of thanksgiving or concern either silently or aloud. Source of all being, beginning and end, we praise you for those who have served you faithfully, 
For the sake of Jesus Christ, replenish our hope in your eternal realm, that we may have life in all its fullness, unfettered by the fear of death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope and the peace of Christ be always with you. Continue to move more deeply into the heart and mystery of our worship, Holy Communion. I invite you to give as generously as you are able to support God's mission through this parish. If you want to donate online, there is a QR code on the back of the bulletin that you can use to do that. And please know that wherever you are in your journey of faith, you are welcome and encouraged to come forward at Communion, which continues to be in bread only. Just a word about that, you have no doubt by now noticed that there is no altar platform here this morning. There is information about that in the parish notes if you are wondering why that is. But I encourage you to please imagine that the altar platform is still here, and when you come up, gather around as you would and stand to receive communion, unless you're really feeling penitential and want to kneel on the floor, but I don't advise that. And remember that you are, everyone is encouraged to come forward at communion. If you don't wish to receive the bread, simply cross your arms over your chest. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice, for the Lord is near, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds this day and forever.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs of everlasting life, that when Christ shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death. We proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy food for holy people. Receive what you are.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of your body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage, love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. In Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for just a few moments. Thanks again to the Reverend Liz Steinhauser for being our guest preacher today. Can we get another amen for her? Liz will be here for social hour today, and then on Wednesday evening this week, we're actually hosting a special Zoom meeting with her, so if you want to know more about our partnership with St. Stephen's and the many ways that you and we can engage with them, please plan on joining that. There's information on how to get the Zoom link in the parish notes, and I encourage you to read that. Also today, after church, down in the dining room, we're having our December Courageous Conversations. There's also an option for those of you joining remotely, so if you didn't get the email uh, that I sent out this morning and you need that link, send me another email and I will make sure that you get it so that you can join remotely. It will take a little bit for us to get set up and get the technology set up in the, in the dining room, so feel free to go and grab some refreshments at social hour, and then if you would like, join us downstairs for Courageous Conversation. There's an awful lot going on the, in the next couple of weeks. There's a lot of information in the parish notes about the upcoming Christmas services, about lessons and carols, which is next week, about upcoming hikes that we're going on, about the deadlines for names for the Book of Remembrance, which is coming up. And so I encourage you to read the parish notes. And then the one final joyful thing that we need to do is admit Beth Borgo to the Order of the Daughters of the King. So I would invite Beth and the presenter to come forward. The other daughters, if you would please just stand up where you are. So Mary and Beth. And she'd be right here. All right. It is my privilege to present Beth Borgo as a candidate for membership in the Order of the Daughters of the King. We commend this candidate to your earnest prayers that she may have grace to fulfill the obligations of the Order and that her labors may be to the glory of God and to the welfare of all God's people. Beth, the Daughters of the King is an order for women whose mission is the extension of Christ's kingdom especially among women and girls, through prayer, service, and evangelism. Do you desire to become a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King? Do. do you promise to obey faithfully the two rules of the Order, the rule of prayer and the rule of service, to offer your support to the clergy for the good of the parish and the extension of Christ's kingdom, to wear faithfully the cross of the Order, and to work for its purposes as God may give you the opportunity. I do with God's help. Then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I receive and admit you as a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King. This is addressed to everyone, including the daughters in the congregation. Will you all support this woman in her ministry of prayer and service? We will. Mary, can I have the cross, please? Bless, O oh Lord, this cross, and grant to your servant now admitted into this order such an abundance of your grace that she may wear this sacred symbol in the spirit of humility and with devotion to the service of the King of Kings. Amen. Beth, accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take up your cross and follow me. Almighty God, help me to pray so faithfully that I may 
draw near to you and learn your will. Help me to serve so joyfully that others may be drawn to you. May your Holy Spirit guide me each day that all I think, do, or say may be pleasing in your sight. I ask it all for the sake of him whose cross I wear, my King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And all of the daughters? O oh, Heavenly Father, you have sent us your Son to teach us things pertaining to your heavenly kingdom. Give your the blessing to our order, wherever it may be throughout the world. Grant that we, your daughters, ever may discern your truth and hear the cross through the battles of our earthly life. Give us our strength to overcome temptation and the grace to work to spread your kingdom and to gather your scattered sheep within your field. Pour out upon us the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit that we may always remember it is your work we are called to do, that all we think, do, or say may be pleasing in your sight. We ask it all for his sake, our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite all of you to now stand. May your love, O Lord, help the daughters live lives of love, and may your holiness lead them to be examples of virtue, that they, strengthened by your Holy Spirit, may pray and serve you all their days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God, eternal majesty, incarnate word, and abiding spirit be among all of you and guide you all into the way of peace. Amen. As we await our coming Savior, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.